worker. Ito ang mga pangyayari na dapat makikita lamang sa mga teleporyo. But these are the threats that journalists face every day. At hindi pa kasama dito ang harassments, libel cases, midnight raids, at death threats na ang isang tanghalian na yun tatapunan ng mga miyembro ng media. Such threats are mind-blocking in a country that has a long tradition of fighting for freedom of the press. Maging panahon man ni Rizal na nagsusulat ng lasolari na solidaridad para ipalaganap ang diskurso ng reporma o panahon ng makino kung saan nabuhay ang mosquito press para labanan ng rehimen noon na patunayan na ipaglalaban ng Pilipino ang karapatang magkaroon, magkaroon ng malayang pamamahayag. If that is the case, why are typical reporters still killed? Why do unscrupulous individuals routinely use violence to impinge a right which the courts have delicately protected? Why do journalists still bleed just to use a right that is already worn through blood? Presently, efforts to resolve all cases of media killings have been centralized in the Presidential Task Force on Violence Against Media Workers. Created in 2016, through Administrative Order No. 1, the task force is mandated to receive reports of such incidents from citizens, investigate and prosecute those culpable, and aid in the protection of witness among other purposes. Ngunit karong klaro na hindi ito nagsisibing deterrent sa mga nais patahiwikin ang mga kritikal ng media. As of today, 13 journalists have been killed since 2016. The latest victim was Mr. Joey Yana, the host of DWZR 8.8 kHz Zoom Radio Legacy, who was shot by unknown assailants last July. Higit pa, wala kami narinig na balita tungkol sa pag-iimbestiga ng mga kaso tungkol sa mga media killings. To the Presidential Task Force, we will expect your full and unconditional cooperation moving forward. We will not hesitate to exercise our mandate and our oversight during our deliberation of budgets as members of Congress. As the committee deliberations move forward, we would also appreciate the input of our guests or the possibility of providing mandatory accident insurance and other benefits to all media practitioners. The great justice Dan Dice once said in corruption that sunlight is the best of disinfectants, electric light the most efficient policeman. More often than not, the hard work of prying, opening the mechanisms of corruption falls upon the media's shoulders. Ngunit magagawa lamang nila ang kanilang trabaho kung ipagtatanggol natin ang karapatang magkaroon ng malayang pamamahayag legally and in reality. With that said, I hereby ask the resource persons to identify themselves, beginning with our VP from uh, Radio KBP. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm Miguel Rangel from People Radio of Tapasan and Mabo, Tapasan and Pilipinas. Madam Chair, I'm Miguel Rangel from People Radio of Tapasan and Mabo, Tapasan and Pilipinas. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Marvin Gatpayat, uh, USEC for Legal for the Presidential Communications Operations Office. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm uh, Andrew Gatpayat, I'm the Executive Director of uh, the Presidential Council uh, under the under the uh, Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm Police Chief Superintendent Armila Escobar, the newly designated uh, Regional Director of the Philippine National Police. NPR 5. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I am Police Chief Superintendent Tyro B. Masigon, the Deputy Director, Director for Investigation and Detective Management, PNP. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I am Police Senior Superintendent George Almaden, the Deputy Director of the Legal Service, Philippine National Police. 
Good Madam Chair. I am Police Senior Superintendent Milo Pagtalunan, the Provincial Director of Albay PP Osmond. Uh, magandang hapon po, Madam Chair. I am Attorney in Relief from uh, NBIP Call Regional Office. Thank you. Siguro balikan natin ang hindi pa nagpapakilala. Um, Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Raymond Villanueva, Deputy Secretary General of the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines. Good afternoon. I'm ako pa si Lottie Salarda, ang Media Safety Officer ng NJT. Okay, maraming salamat sa inyong pagdalo ngayong hapon. So, umpisa natin dun sa mga sa tingin ko na napakahalaga, no? Nandito ba yung nandito yung Performance Task Force, no, para sa interagency group na in charge dito sa media yes, uh, protection. Madam Chair. Kayo yun? Apo. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we have a presentation to show sana. And with mm. your permission, with your indulgence, we'd like to uh, show it now. Sige. Uh, Yusek, eh, ko ito yung mga tanong ko. Ha. Sana masagot niyan o idagdag niyo. Ano na yung performance report niyo? Yung accomplishment ng administrative order number A01. Alam, alam niyo yun, ano? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. This is a, a comprehensive report since the beginning po and up to present, okay. including our uh, achievements and accomplishments and challenges. Ilang minuto to kasi hanggang 2.30 lang po tayo? Siguro po ito, pipilitin ko po ng mga 15 minutes. <laughs> because meron pong, ano, meron pong um, uh, audio-visual message din yung uh, sister ni Joe Williana. Oh, sige, go ahead, please. Apa. Okay. Ayan, babasa ko naman pala. Uh, thank you again, Madam Chair. Uh, my presentation today uh, will cover, of course, uh, the introduction to AO1 and the definition of uh, important terms under AO1. And uh, as you requested, uh, killings and action taken, the updates, work-related and non-work-related, uh, on, on um, uh, work-related and non-work-related cases. And of course, number four, the proactive measures that we're implementing, the challenges um, that we faced since the beginning, <coughs> and lastly, the ways forward. I'm going to explain uh, uh, our uh, vision 2020 action plan eventually. Next slide, please. The Duterte administration recognizes media's vital role for sustained developmental communications towards continued economic development and social progress. This government also recognizes that a free press is an absolute necessity in attaining the peace and prosperity we are all aspiring for. That is why on October 11, 2016, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte signed this administrative order number one, creating the Presidential Task Force on Violence Against Media Workers. For brevity and uh, purposes of uh, nomenclature, this task force is now more popularly known as the Presidential Task Force on Media Security, or PTFOMS. The first task force in Asia and possibly the world, with a mandate to protect the life, liberty, and security of media workers. AO1 reads in part, the present administration declares as a matter of policy that all of these forms of political violence and abuses of power, whether by agents or elements of the state or of non-state forces against members of the so-called fourth estate, must stop. And towards this end, commits to establish a government-wide program of action where the whole system of the bureaucracy is involved in the efficient, coherent, and comprehensive resolution of unsolved cases of violence in the form of killings, enforced disappearances, torture, and other grave violations of the right to life, liberty, and security of persons against the members of the press. Definition of important terms. Media workers, those who are legitimately engaged in media practice directly or indirectly, whether as a principal occupation or not, including but not limited to reporters, anchor persons, commentators, columnists, cameramen, photographers in print, internet, radio, and television. Media worker killings will refer to killings wherein A, the victim was a media worker as defined in AO1, B, the victim was targeted and killed by reason of being a media worker as defined in these guidelines, C, the person or persons responsible for the killing is a state agent or non-state agent. D, the method and circumstances of attack reveal a deliberate intent to kill. 
for purposes of the focused mandate of AO1, Madam Chair, killings not in any way related to the victim's profession shall be addressed by other appropriate mechanism, mechanisms within the justice system. But let me point out that as a matter of policy, we consider each, we presume each as media worker killing. Red flagging as one of our proactive measures is defined in Section 5, Article 3 of the Operational Guidelines of AO1. Section 5, other functions. And I quote, the PT forms point persons and or the members of the PT forms councils shall recommend to the task force the red flagging, red flagging, not red tagging, red flagging by the executive director of these persons of interest, informing them, among others, that they are on the PT forms watch list. However, this must not constrain the PT forms executive director to red flag. Certain POIs, after careful and thorough validation of the threats against media workers, from other verifiable sources. Yusek Edko, yes. um, I, I will ask for your indulgence for just a few minutes. Uh, Senator Bams here, just for, uh, just, no, 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 and, and also because he's very concerned, but he has to go back to another hearing. All right. So. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairperson. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And um, we'll be supporting the output of this committee, and of course, the chairperson, kung anong magagawa ho natin para masugpo yung pagpatay ng media sa ating bansa. So, as the chairperson knows, there's another ongoing hearing. I'll be leaving, but we'll be keeping tabs on the output of the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Senator Van. Okay. If I may continue, Van. Please continue. <coughs> Next slide, please. We have also the PT Forms Quick Response System, or QRS, and this is a standard procedure or mechanism of receiving, recording, resolving, responding to, and reporting on complaint or grievance or request for assistance. This embodies our PT Forms protocols, which I'm going to explain later. The PT Forms QRS team, a body tasked to craft, implement, and effective PT Forms QRS, strictly in adherence to the jurisdiction and mandate of AO1. The PT Forms QRS shall form part of the PTF policies and guidelines that the executive director may approve in consultation with the task force members, observers, and resource persons. Next slide. Upon our observation, there are three types of risks being faced by media workers. First is duty. The performance of the main functions of a journalist in the practice itself is risky, Your Honor. In fact, I myself was, at, was targeted for assassination in 2009, not in 2008. And uh, what's, what's uh, sad about that is that the, the mastermind was a former media man. The next level of risk is advocacy. Relentless criticisms by a journalist or reporter against a subject. If advocacy doubles the risk on the part of the media workers. And the last and the most, uh, and the riskiest, is when somebody goes uh, to a crusade. No? It's the crossing over to being another, from being a reporter to becoming a politician, businessman, etc. It's no longer words against words, but swords against swords. No longer reporting, but actual filing of cases. And we have uh, so many cases at hand to prove that against subjects of reports which put the lives of crusading journalists at high risk. Next slide, please. And now we go to the killings and action taken by the task force, updates, uh, and the classification of work-related and not work-related. Why do we have to classify your honor? because it is very important to put context in each case. Unlike uh, the figures from other <coughs> sources, excuse me, the task force actually monitored and acted upon 17 incidents. From that 17, we have four verified media worker killings, meaning they were killed because of their work, and 13, which are non, not related to their work. Please proceed. Uh, please, uh, so we answered the question, why are journalists being killed? Let me first show you, uh, after the creation of this task force, uh, we were able to map uh, uh, the vulnerabilities of each region, of each uh, region in the Philippines. So we call them the most vulnerable regions, that not the most dangerous at all, because vulnerable meaning uh, we're looking forward, it's progressive, and we need to address those vulnerabilities. So, the top, next slide please, the most vulnerable at present, and this covers only a 10-year period from 2008 to present, 
is the region of arm where we have 34 cases of killings including the 32 from the Maguindanao massacre so uh, second place is region 11 uh, third place is region uh, 7 region 4 uh, number 4 is region 12 and surprisingly on number 5 is shared by NCR region 10 region 8 and region 5 and at number 6 we have region 3 uh, region 9 region 4a and region 4b number 7 we have uh, region 1 and car and at number 8 we have region 6 and region 8 and what's that region 2 all right and region 2 our observation your honor is that media killings per se is a byproduct of the hostile or violent geopolitical environment the last time we went uh, uh, the last time we held our seminar in Baguio for instance the the uh, DOJ prosecutors there the policemen the journalists uh, present in our seminar including uh, local politicians uh, they were telling us talaga that dito walang gulo ang politika wala wala kaming ganyang problema that's our observation so what are the three indicators or major contributors to this problem first upon our observation as we go around the country we ask people we ask journalists we ask politicians we, in fact uh, it's common knowledge to uh, w uh, uh, with our uh, fellow journalists here the three major contributors are one dirty politics number two corruption in all forms number three is a vulnerability of media among the three we find and we believe that uh, the vulnerability of media is the most doable or it's the easiest to address when we say vulnerable uh, it is in terms of number one we observe also that wherever we go wherever we investigate uh, cases of media killings there are rivalries and infighting among various media groups and practitioners. Number two, talaga pong kalunos-lunos ang economic vulnerabilities ng ating mga kapatid sana buhay. Number three, we're trying to find out the correlation between media ownership and politics because it is true that some stations, uh, whether TV, cable, radio, or some print in the provinces are owned by politicians and even black times. Number four, black timers are prone to violence as shown by our records. We have 21 confirmed black timer deaths. So uh, that will be part of our recommendations uh, later on. Number five, small entities are usually financed by politicians. So we really need to help them and address these vulnerabilities. And number six, media violence spikes around election season. In fact, it, it has begun. So we really need to act now to prevent uh, uh, more killings in the future because of the midterm elections. Next slide, please. Killings and action taken updates, work related. Okay, other acts of violence against media workers. These are other acts which we acted upon, not only killings, yung 17 po. Meron pang uh, mga nag-survive, binarel, nag-survive. Ito po yan. Unang-una po, Matapos mapirmahan natin pangulang executive order number one, wala kaming opisina, walang sweldo, walang tao, binaril po si Virgilio Maganes ng November 8, 2016. Siya po yung nakaupo sa kaliwa at ang regional director po ng PNP yung nasa kanan at ang provincial director yung katabi ko. Yung kaso pong ito, may, na, may nakasuhan po at uh, subject ng warrants of arrest. May dalawa. Wala pa po opisina tayo na. Next, the case of Julito Orillaneda, Binaril din po ito. Saka muna po, yung, yung yes. una, um, related ba sa trabaho niya? Opo. Yung, yung pagpat... Opo. Yung attempt of... Uh, may mga confidential po kami pinag-usapan kung bakit ano at... Uh -huh. uh, yes, Pero inamin maganda, po niya. Maganda na pinupuntahan mo. Kayo ba may yes, background talaga sa media? Dati ba kayong... I was uh, president of the National Press Club and I, uh, I was a journalist. Until now, I'm writing for three decades already. For, for where? For... for for what what uh, publication? Uh, I write uh, right now for three uh, tabloids, and I and I host a uh, regular program over PTV. That's why you, you you can sympathize, no? I was at. I'm also a victim of violence. My in brother was killed. My uncle was killed. So that's why I'm putting my dito. And I was also targeted for assassination. So there. So, so you're each up case for the is job. Okay. each case is personal to me, Your Honor. Okay. Next. Next. Julito Orillaneda, he was shot and he survived. 
and we directed uh, then uh, Chief Superintendent Fausto Manzanilla uh, to, to investigate sa DIDM po ito. So, meron na pong frustrated murder case na na-file against a certain Leonardo Davan Zamora, barangay council member po ng kanilang barangay. Next. Si Chris Ibon, he's my friend. Uh, binaral din po siya while watching TV uh, tumago sa kanyang balikat, kaliwat kanan, no? yung, yung bala, but uh, he's under our protective uh, uh, cover now. And uh, may charge, mayroon na pong pinipare na charges of frustrated murder dun sa, na, sa lineup. Politika rin ito eh. Next. Si Carlos uh, Caloisasis and Wally Magdato. Uh, ito po yung, uh, yung sasakyan, binarin nila, tinakot ito. So kinausap po natin yung dalawa and uh, we protected them since the incident. Next. Ito na po yung ano, sa mga killings. The first Media worker-related killing under our inventory, in our inventory, is that of Larike. Larike was shot on December 19. Well, again po, Madam Chair, two months pa lang po napirmahan dito yung ano, <laughs> AO1. Wala po kami pusina. But uh, he expired on December 20. Immediately, nag-coordinate po ang uh, NUJP, uh, kami with NUJP, and then we, set, uh, we sent our then uh, lawyer, si Bong... Uh, Arulyado to investigate. Ito po yung naiwan ako sa aeroplano dahil na-flat yung aking sasakyan. So, siya lang yung nakapunta. But, uh, ito pong kaso ni Larik eh, uh, may sinarge po na governor ng kanilang lugar, dalawang police, at saka yung tao ng governor, and it is a waiting resolution by the DOJ. Nakatutok po kami. The second media worker related killing is that of Christopher Lozada. Uh, he was killed uh, on October 24, 2017. I went there personally. I investigated personally, conducted a case conference with the uh, investigators, and went to his wake. And right now po ang status niyan, yung pong suspect na na-identify ng star witness natin na under our protective custody ngayon, she is somewhere here, uh, yung pong suspect may six standing warrants of arrest. And we're preparing another. Taga muna, the suspect is here? No, no, no. The, the witness po, somewhere here. Ah, the witness. <laughs> Wala okay, na po sa probinsya. Okay. <laughs> the witness, the witness. Okay. Okay, next. The third is that of uh, Dennis Denora, uh, who was killed uh, on June 7, 2018. So, uh, immediately po, we instructed uh, the provincial prosecutor and the provincial director of, um, of that region to form Task Force uh, Denora, uh, AO1 Task Force. So, marami po nangyari dyan at uh, ang latest dyan, yung forensics uh, investigation ay sinabmit na po sa kanila for, uh, for the filing of, of cases. And the fourth is that of Joe Villana. Uh, in fact, uh, we went there, I went there I, uh, uh, with the coordination of our uh, good regional director, General Escobal. Joe Villana was killed on July 20 while we were holding our seminar in Baguio, po yung AO1 seminar po. That's why while telling people in uh, regions 1, 2, and CAR to be careful, my mind was actually in Albay the same day. So I went there. Um, usually po yan, i-form agad yung special investigation task group. And then I, every time na may incident, I make sure that I attend the wake because I really uh, believe that interviewing the families and, the f and, the, and friends of the victims, I'll get uh, enough... Uh, uh, information for sharing with with policemen, with the uh, police investigators. So, marami po kami nakuha, but, uh, but uh, sad to say, Your Honor, if you really need to get details of, of uh, about the Joe Williana case, the more sensitive details, I would rather do it in an executive session. That's how sensitive it is. So, this is a uh Related to his work, safe to assume? It's a combination. Combination, all Apo. right. Next. So that's the four. So we now go, out, we now go to the 13. Uh, I, I even asked my, uh, my uh, colonel friend from the Army to help in this investigation. Mr. Kantawi was no longer a radio reporter when he was killed. According to authorities, the possible motive for the killing of this university professor was personal grudge. Pero lahat po ito, ma'am, na binabanggit ko, inimbestigahan po namin. Okay, next. Marlon Muiko. Muiko was a radio black timer who was also a close-in bodyguard of Malang Mayor Russell Abonado. 
Police investigators are still determining the motive of the suspects in the killing of Muiko. Next. Kuyang Jun Joaquin Briones, he was my friend. In fact, um, the month before he died, he applied for a position in the task force. So I told him, Kuyang, wala pa kaming budget, wala pa kaming opisina. I'll get back to you as soon as funds are made available, so I'll employ you. He died on March 13, 2017. We investigated uh, the case. We protected the family. And that photo, we believe, was taken by the gunman on Facebook. May pinadalang po sila, then nakakuha po kami. Kasi may, may nakabaril po dyan, no? Ayan, no? Hawak po yung baril, oh. <laughs> so a case of mur for murder has been filed against Antonio Del Rosario, alias Ronnie Del Rosario. Uh, and others. Uh, Follow-up operations po, uh, resulted in the killing of three suspects. And, the, uh, and uh, only two weeks ago, uh, one of the suspects was arrested in um, Quezon City. Teka muna, personal ba yan? O uh, hindi, po hindi po siya work-related. Hindi po siya nag-hard, uh, hindi po siya hard-hitting and puro local ano lang po yung kanya. And he was active in politics. But we, we investigated also. Of course, uh, the case of uh, Michael Marasigan and his brother, I was instructed by then the OJ Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre to investigate, uh, he being the chairman of the task force. But uh, Marasigan po, uh, at the time of his death, uh, retired na po siya. Eh. Ten years na po siyang wala sa media, so hindi po siya work-related. And we, we uh, asked the PNP to continue the investigation. Hindi po siya AO1. Next. Leo Diaz. Leo Diaz was killed on August 7, 2017. Anniversary niya. Uh, siya po ay taga-sultan ko darat. At sa aming pagpag-iimbisiga, pinuntahan po namin ito. Ang sabi ko sa kanila, I will not leave this place hanggat wala po tayong nakukuhang malinaw na na witness or motibo. And at nung siya po ay nilibeng, yun na po may lumapit na sa akin. And right now, the killer is the top most wanted in his province for killing uh, Leo Diaz. Before that, uh, ano, tao din po ng mga politician sa local. Next. Rudy Alikaway was an entertainment broadcaster. Um, hindi po siya related sa work because ang uh, nakita po nating mga investigators dito ay uh, nagsimula ito sa away sa uh, horse fighting. Ano ganon. But, uh, uh, at the time of his death, he was also a village official. Next. Uh, si Alexi Balongaita, she was a DJ from Cebu. When, when she died, I was there. Uh, I was attending a uh, press meeting. No? So, isa po siya sa napag-usapan namin. Sabi ko, I already in instructed the local police to investigate. She was able to shoot her assassin. Uh, the the uh, guy was hit in the face. But naago po, nabaril siya sa dibdib, so she died. The motive was robbery that resulted uh, in homicide. Nahuli po yan. Edmund Sestoso, only recently, April 30, was shot. And uh, he died the next day. No? Nung napatay po siya, uh, no less than um, special assistant to the president, uh, Secretary Bongo, Secretary Martin Andanar, and I went to his wake no? to, to uh, console with the family po and to send our and to personally express our uh, sympathies to the to the family. The latest dito po sa Sestoso uh, killing, we already filed charges against certain suspects. And uh, I was informed, I think, uh, two weeks ago that one of them was killed. One of the suspects. Hindi po siya related sa trabaho. Ano po ito? Uh, may isa pong kaso na involved siya. Parang may pinakulong nagalit sa kanya yung family. Diyong po ang lumabas sa investigation. Next. And Carlos Matas. On May 12, 2018, Carlos Matas was, uh, who, who, who was a retired soldier and volunteer broadcaster of the XCA FM radio, was ambushed by an unidentified gunman along the highway in uh, Barangay Nuburan, Zamboanga del Sur. Uh, immediately po, nag-order po tayo, Madam Chair, ng investigation dito. And uh, follow-up operations, 
resulted in Next slide please. After po mapatay si Matas, yung follow-up operations po natin, combined operations ng PNP at ng AFP resulted in the killing of three of the suspects. Manny Laksamana, who was a, a very good friend of mine, Kuya Manny, uh, he was a businessman and subdivision developer from Nueva Ecija. Uh, napakabait po niya sa media, siya po itumutulong talaga sa Central uh, Luzon Media Association. Uh, we had so many times together. Uh, but uh, uh, upon investigation po, hindi po related sa media work yung kanyang pagkakamatay. Next. Jesse Cano, hindi rin po siya related. Uh, and I, uh, he was a former, uh, he was uh, an army reservist, no? And that made him a possible target of Islamic State sympathizers. Next. We have Julius Barellano, 35 years old, resident of Sitio Cot Cot, uh, San Carlos Ito. Hindi rin po ito uh, major re work related because it was revealed during the conduct of follow-up follow investigation that the motive of said incident was personal grudge again between the victim and suspect because they had an argument week weeks before that. Okay, threats against the life, liberty, and security of media workers. Next slide, please. Bukod po dyan, we received, we acted upon various reports and complaints of threats. Ito po sila, hindi ko na po isa-isahin. Madami po yan. Kasama na po dyan yung isang media man na kaibigan ko na kailan lang ay sinakal ng sarili niyang kapatid. At yung latest po niyan, yung dinala sa amin nung isang araw na muntik ng marip na nagtatrabaho po sa isang malaking radio station but she's based in Metro Manila. We're on it also. Next slide please. Proactive measures. Red flagging, as I described earlier, ito po yung pinapadalan po namin ng uh, red flag. Yung mga uh, sinusumbong sa amin, no? Na nag sa kanila and all that. So we have, at present, how many? We have nine? Nine individuals. Ang uh, ni red flag na po natin, pinapadalan po natin yan ng ano, na uh, if ev whatever happens to this person, sila hahabulin natin. So that's uh, part of our proactive measures. Next. The quick response system. Uh, next, uh, I explained it a while ago already. Also, we're preparing to publish, Madam Chair, the PT Forms Protocols, a handbook on personal security measures. Uh, we're uh, looking at uh, printing of at least 10,000 muna for distribution to, uh, to all media workers in the Philippines. Next. Ito po yung sample ng red flagging namin. Kung government siya, ito po yung process. Lahat po ito ay approved ng task force sitting and bank. Kung private, ganun po yung process. Next. Kung may SMS or call uh, threat po kayo, meron na din po kaming protocols. Next. Kung uh, ito po ay online, ano? this uh, refers to online threats. So, inaalam natin, control yan, kung fake yan. Kung identified mo yung nag-threat sa'yo online, we have 24 hours to direct the chief of police investigate. And then, Kung personal po siya, nire-red flag po natin, government or private siya. Next. Kung ito po ay um, actual na, actual uh, physical uh, attack, eh syempre, ma-arrestuhin po natin. Kung ma-arrest siya, ito po yung ating uh, mabilis na protocols. Next. Ito po yung surveillance, uh, which we did in the case of uh, Just Malabanan. No? Uh, we, uh, we implemented this, ano, uh, we put this uh, protocol into practice. Uh, he was, uh, the victim was being surveilled according to him, so he hid. And uh, we did our investigation. We found out that the threat was real. And uh, we protected him. Next. Pag po napatay, automatic po, as a matter of policy, uh, we visit the family. Dahil doon lang po makakakuha talaga ng mga magagandang information kasi family talaga una nakakaalam and the closest to the victims. So, yan po yung ating protocols. Next. We also conduct regional seminars. We conducted our seminars in uh, Region 4B, NCR, Region 3, and Regions 1, 2, and CAR already. And so, now we are preparing to conduct our introduction to AO1 and uh, introduction to our operational guidelines and protocols po. Pinapakita po natin sa lahat ng government, uh, ng bureaucracy and media, ito ang ating gagawin, ang ating... Uh, 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 role dito sa task force na ito. Next. Ayan po yung mga sample na 
mga media po yun na sa baba. That's in Baguio and this one's in uh, Subic. Next, next. Okay, next. Of course, we do regular meetings, monthly po yan, uh, where we, uh, uh, you know, apprise ourselves with uh, the cases at hand. Tuloy-tuloy po yan, tuloy-tuloy po yan. Uh, except uh, right now, because we have schedules nga to go to the regions, so kinansal mo na namin yung regular ano namin. And we'll, we'll resume next month, no? Next month po, uh, i-update namin lahat doon. Uy, by the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dito pa lang Deputy Secretary General ng ating ano. It's okay po namin yan. Daming threat niyan eh. <laughs> And we red flag those who threatened him actually. Next. Next. Okay. Challenges. Number five. Ayan po, nung kami nagsimula toward the end of the, of the year 2016, wala po talagang budget. But the PCO, PCOO was so generous that... Uh, we, They provided us a small room that uh, can accommodate only for people. And uh, you know, Madam Chair, yung nasa ilalim po, yan po yung tinatawag naming uh, punong tanggapan because doon po namin ginagawa yung aming pulong sa ilalim ng puno dahil wala po kaming opisina. Next. Yung pong uh, puro volunteers po talaga kami nung una since uh, October 2016 and it was only... Uh, in the second half of 2017 na nagkaroon po tayo ng mga detailed personnel to help us. Next. Okay. Ways forward. So this is a brief discussion of uh, what we have in mind, our uh, Vision 2020 program. Action plan, I mean. Next. So the Vision 2020 action plan of the task force po, It's based on the Defending Journalism book, no? published by International Media Support. So ito po yung talagang, uh, and this contains the five principles for developing and implementing a national safety response. We held a seminar workshop uh, on, uh, on the IMS uh, uh, recommendations last February. March, March, oh, last March, and uh, it was approved po. So the, the approach of the, of, of the action plan includes strategy, presence, collaboration, influence, and sustainability, which is the most important among the five. Next. Yung po ang strategies, risk analysis, country-specific considerations, prioritization, balance between focused action and comprehensive approach. Next is presence, on the ground driver or coordinator. Yung po yung may tao tayo sa baba at kami po yung talagang pumupunta. We send our special agents to the provinces. National reach, of course, uh, Uh, nationwide po ang ating uh, uh, task force. And of course, the, uh, the another important uh, thing is information flow. Collaboration, so raising the profile of the safety of journalists and impunity and providing information. Coordinating the efforts of multiple Siguro actors. So we can skip that already. Yes, opo. So ano yung conclusion po ninyo? All right. So sustainability. So, all right, yung video. Actually, you know what, Yusek uh, Egko, I would like to commend you. This is a very comprehensive you, report, and I, I can really see your sympathy towards your fellow journalists. Thank you, ma'am. And I also appreciate, because I've been conducting several hearings on media killings, and this is probably uh, the most detailed report on you, what's been happening uh, with certain cases. Perhaps uh, since you're, well, quite effective, at least with your job, You can help my colleague here and red flag the ones who are threatening him as well. Um, I would like It depends to, uh, on the good senator, Your Honor. Yes, I would like to acknowledge uh, with thanks the presence of Senator uh, Sonny Trillanes. Tulungan naman natin, marami rin siyang death threats. Ako rin, ma'am. Diba? Somebody okay, called me na nga eh. Hindi, na pina, hindi namin tinitreaten. Ego, napatay na sa probinsya namin. Ano? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Well, anyway, so since you've given me that report, When you say red flagging, because no, mm -hmm. we don't also want to discriminate. Let, let, let me just yes. say, no. so how are you able to red flag? Is there, there should be a credible witness? Yes. Ano pa ba? The complainant himself. The complainant Or herself himself. po. Eh, pa, paano kung namatay na yung, yung biktima? O wala nang, na, sino yung complainant? Pag wala po, yung family po. Yung family. Yes, in our protocols, kasama po yun, so yung nearest of kin. So pag red flag, sinasabihan nyo, o pag may nangyari pa dyan sa ano, pupuntahan Opo. natin kayo. But they are also subject to investigation. Yes, ma'am. Kasi, uh, limbawa, pero pag yung red flagging po, hindi na namin ginagawa pagpatay na. Pinupuntahan na po talaga 
namin, Your Honor. By the way, Your Honor, we have a, a short, again, a short uh, video presentation. Mahigsi lang po ito of some of the victims, including Joey Liana's sister. And she, because okay. she has a message for you. Okay. For me? Yes. Hindi pa pwedeng ano na, executive session yan. Uh, ma ano lang po, maigsi lang po Maigsi lang. Oh, sige, go ahead. Um, and then, we would like to hear also, because we hear your efforts, but I want to hear from the PNP as well as from the NBI if they have any follow-up investigations. Uh -huh. Please go ahead and play your video. Please play the video. Siguro habang sineset up niya yan, kasi pwede naman yan maya-maya, ano, matanong ko lang yung, um, ay, magkano na yung budget nyo ngayon? <laughs> Ma'am, by request lang po kami. Uh, wala po kaming uh, uh, specific uh, budget, but uh, the Office of the President, where we get our uh, budget request, actually asked us to, sub to submit no, our programs of action, plans of action for the year, and I think they allotted us Um, I think about a little over 10 million, pero by request lang po ito, wala po kami sariling budget talaga. Pero teka muna, this is under PCOO pa rin? No, uh, the task force po is under, uh, the, the, the secretariat is under the office of the president. The PCOO is only the co-chairman because the chairman is the Department of Justice. Siguro dapat 1.5 billion ang budget ng PCOO eh. Ito talaga uh, pinipuntahan we, ninyo, di ba? The PCO po uh, tried to uh, to allot, uh, I think, 11 million for the task force last year, but it was, unfortunately, na wala po dun sa budget. Natanggal po. Eh, eh saan kayo kumuha? Office of the President? Sa na? Office of the President po, very kind naman po ang uh, aming uh, uh, mga boss doon. Kung ano po yung kailangan. But, uh, Your Honor, maybe I, I'll, uh, I'll take this opportunity to say na kami po, Lack of resources, uh, uh, made as resourceful eh. Nag-share-share na lang po kami, even yung mga pamasahe. Tsaka na lang po namin na re-reimburse. Magkano bang kailangan nyo? Kasi magbabudget na kami. I mean yung wish list nyo. Bigay mo na lang sa akin. Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you very much, Your Tapos Honor. Ako, bukas na bukas po. <laughs> Ganyan talaga yung ano. Thank eh, you very much. And uh, on behalf of all no, journalists. No, no, we we appreciate the, the candidness. I mean, You have to tell us, and then if we can afford it, but definitely this is a priority because diba, it is hinged on press freedom. Exactly. Of course, it's uh, press safety, diba? and, and we, want, we want to be able to do our part. And we appreciate that you yourself would go and attend to it. Diba? Yung iba Apo. magpapadala lang. Ikaw, dahil kilala mo yung iba, unfortunately, Apo, yes. si pinupuntahan We mo. broke the barrier between the investigator and the family. Kasi before po kaya nahirapan investigator, ayaw ka usapin police, baka sila suspect. So, ang ginagawa po namin, kami pumupunta, trust us. Hindi, totoo rin. Mm -hmm. Hindi, not because we don't really trust the yeah. police, mm -hmm. but syempre, when you're paranoid, uh, you make all sorts of assumptions, and it's better to speak to a, uh, a civilian or, or somebody and, from uh, the industry. And Your Honor, uh, I'd like to commend also the Philippine National Police. Very active po sila, and also the NBI. Wala po, 24-7 po kami. Nagpapaypay na nga lang po ako ng, nung Christmas Eve ng, ng tawag dito. Nang barbecue, bigla may tumawag, may Ganun? threat eh. Apo. Pataga muna, so kunyari ako media, no? may nagtatreaten sa akin, hmm. alam ko na ba saan ako tatawag? Apo, meron po kaming And hotline, uh, meron din, sa Facebook po, tsaka yung number ko talagang well, ano Then, po yun. Huwag na muna yung number mo, anong hotline? Kasi <laughs> ah, ayaw naman number, natin na, John? Wait. meron bang direkta? Kasi, di ba yung presidente, meron na tinalagang 911, di ba? Ay, inaayos pa po namin yun, Your Honor, yung para mabilis, but, uh, We have a dedicated uh, phone number. No, because that that should be yes. made public. I mean, not necessarily public, but you should make it part of your, uh, what you call this, pamphlet na nakalagay yes, ito yung tatawagan nyo. So, wala pa, ha? Wala pa po. Yung sa, in fact, e, wala pa po kaming Wi-Fi. <laughs> bago lang po yung office namin, uh, October e, lang e, po kami. Paano kayo natawagan ng mga iba na? Ay, yung pong coordination with, ano, 
Halimbawa po ang KBP, ang dami po na-refer sa amin ng mga, kaibig, ng mga threatened, ang NUJP, ganun din po, yung various media groups because they sit in the task force, Madam Chair, as observers and resource persons. Unlike before, we were we, we sat uh, in AO35, but we were just observers. We, we, we cannot, we're not allowed to speak talaga. Okay. But you know what, Yusek, I think that uh, this is a priority, a dedicated hotline, not so much to report a uh, death kasi unfortunately at by that point medyo late na eh. mm. it's really to report threats yes um so that proactive oh kasi of course your 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 co your task force cannot be spread too thin you can coordinate with the local pnp na puntahan nga ninyo kung credible that's ito that's true diba? so um isa yan sa hihingin ko sa inyo ha mag mag request na kayo sa uh, office of the president or pcoo i'm sure you can you're generous enough to be able to dedicate a number for them. Yes, uh, Since you already gave them Thank you very much, ma'am. Huh? And we'll cite uh, your so you recommendation. So, Yusek Kapayat, ha? Pakitanong na lang kay Yusek, uh, kay okay. Secretary Adana. Ito po yung ngayong Maganda hotline namin, namin eh. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Para yung budget ninyo, medyo may, may katuturan Yun na. Yun nga po, eh. Uh, thank you very much po for this opportunity. Talaga na napakita po namin, despite our mig resources talagang wala wala po up to now yung isang staff namin na retired colonel ako po nagbibigay ng allowance eh. taken from my salary but of course we 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 understand the 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 problem po kasi bagong bago lang po talaga siya in fact yung office namin october october lang po 2017 hindi pala sige so marami naman discretionary funds rin yung secretary pagka priority yung isang bagay so i'm sure Thank naman secretary much. andanar also having the same background, coming from media, will have also that uh, uh, compassion for your group. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Thank you very so much. So let's go ahead with your video presentation. Is it okay? Separate file mo na. Go. <laughs> Dali. Baka mawala kang budget. <laughs> Natatawag muna ako ng iba kasi inahanda pa eh, no? Um, PNP muna siguro. Uh, ano po yung mga report ninyo with your coordination with them or on your own initiative? Any reports, please? Ano to? Yes na? Hindi pa rin. Ma'am, may prepare din po kami na short presentation, ma'am. Sino? Sa ah, kayo? Ay, ito ba yung hmm. sa inyo? Ay, hindi pa po. Okay. Hindi pa. Okay. So, wag muna yung presentation. Or, or yung presentation nyo, yun na yung report. Hindi po, ma'am. Yung report namin yung presentation. O, oh, sige. I-sync nyo muna kung ano yung pwede nyo yung i-sync dyan. Ha? Tatanungin ko muna yung, NUG, uh, yung KBP at saka yung NUJP. Ah, hindi, nag, wala. Ma wala pa yung NUJP. Umalis na ba? Sino yung umalis dito? Ah, hindi, wala. O, sige. So, um, unahin muna natin yung NUJP. If you have any statements, uh, Mr. Villanueva. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, two pages lang naman po. Um, the National Union of Journalists of the Philippines welcomes Senator Grace Post Senate Resolution 800 looking into cases of media killings, threats, and harassments. would like to uh, uh, present uh, uh, the, the, these cases, the cases of uh, killings, harassments, and threats in a different lens. Journalists and broadcasters are first and foremost citizens of our country. If the people are victims of wanton killings, intimidation, threats, then we are too. The NUJP does not consider these killings any different from those of judges, lawyers, priests, activists, farmers, LUMAD, suspected drug users and peddlers, and many other victims of human rights violations in the country. Two years after President Rodrigo Duterte came into power, the NUJP has recorded 12 media killings incidents of media killings involving media practitioners in the, in the provinces. Of the 12 media killing victims, 10 of them were reported to be hard-hitting radio commentators who were mostly from the regions, while the remaining two were uh, considered as hard-hitting columnists. Their murder were mostly perpetrated by motorcycle riding men riding in tandem with the same modus operandi. Of the 12 cases, and they're only the suspects of the killings of Marlon Muyco and Joaquin Briones killings were arrested by the PNP. The murder cases of Leo, Leodoro Diaz, Edmund Sistoso, and Carlos Matas were already filed in court 
suspects have yet to be identified by investigating agencies in the killings of Rudy Alikaway, Mario Cantawi, Apolinario Suban Jr., Dennis Tenora, and Joe Villana. The case of Larry Ke, whose alleged, uh, alleged mastermind was a prominent uh, politician in the province of Catanduanes, and his accomplices, Prince Lim Subion and the alleged gun, uh, uh, gunman police officer Vincent Tac Tacorda, is still for resolution with the Department of Justice in Manila. Christopher Lazada's case is, uh, until, is still under investigation by the authorities, where Bislig Mayor Librado Navarro has, had been identified as person of interest. The NUJP considers these killings as work-related unless otherwise proven by competent authorities such as the trial courts. On media harassment, the NUJP has recorded 26 cases of media harassment, threats, and six online harassments which involved mostly women journalists. Women journalists receive, receive threats online from paid trolls because of their stories, because their stories are not beneficial to the image of the current administration. Meanwhile, there are eight journalists who are facing libel cases in relation to their work. Just last week, four members of the Alternative Media Network and one campus journalist were beaten up by Nutri Asia guards and arrested by the Mekawayan police while covering the labor strike. Directly related to this was the red tagging and vilification of journalists by the 101st Technical Support Group Battalion of the Armed Forces of the Philippine, Philippines Reserve Command which is one of the worst case of media harassment by a government entity since the AFP accused several media outfits as so-called enemies of the state, including the NUJP, in 2006, and President Rodrigo Duterte's justify justification of media killings in a speech in 2016. Earlier, President Duterte threatened to make the renewal of congressional franchises of several networks difficult. Rappler's reporters have also been banned from covering the president. Furthermore, we have government officials blatantly undermining press freedom by calling critical journalists' names. All this contribute to the sad situation we are now faced it with. Recommendations, Your Honor. We ask the Senate to reject House Bills 7141 and 5507 that seek to amend the Human Security Act of 2017 that will include cyber libel as a predicate crime as well as other e equally dangerous provisions that would make the practice of independent journalism in this country impossible when this reach the Senate. In fact, we strongly urge the Senate to take the ini initiative to decriminalize libel altogether. We urge the Senate to conduct inquiries on why the Armed Forces of the Philippines is harassing journalists and why it branded media outfits and organizations such as the NUJP as enemies of the state and refuse to withdraw these unjust accusations. We ask the Senate to renew any proposal or to reject any proposal from government to regulate the press through qualifying examinations right to reply laws and other such anti-democratic proposals and measures. Finally, we urge the Senate to pass laws banning the practice of labor-only contracting in the media industry. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Villanueva. Uh, what bothers me from, well, your report, aside from most of it, is the, uh, uh, raises a concern, is your assertion that the AFP is calling certain media groups the enemies of the state or all? C certain outfits and organizations such as NUJP, Your Honor. In particular, NUJP? Yes, yeah? yes. Who, who um, manifested this from the AFP? The, the entire AFP, we, uh, they, they did this, they, they created the PowerPoint presentation as early as 2006, um, pointing to media organizations such as NUJP as enemies of the state. We have res received reports as late as a few weeks ago that the AFP is still going around schools using that PowerPoint presentation, accusing NUJP and critical media organizations such as Bulatlat, Code of Productions, as so-called enemies of the state. Okay, so, ginagamit pa rin pa, pa rin nila yun, 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 uh, your honor 
nung panahon ni former Gloria president Arroyo. Gloria Arroyo, ginagamit pa rin hanggang ngayon. So, e, e, parang, may AFP ba tayo dito? Um, the PNP, are you aware of that PowerPoint? I mean, under what uh, what particular campaign is that PowerPoint presentation used for? Is it, it was it was uh, it, it went around during the state of national emergency in 2006 of uh, former president. So uh, why did they go around schools presenting that? Under what particular program? Uh, um, Professor Dani Arau. Uh, uh, yeah, ideas. Professor, are you are you aware of this yes, presentation? Your Honor. Because aside from the academe, I'm also a board member of Bulatlat and Kodo Productions. It's part of the social civic campaign of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. If you're interested, Your Honor, the title of the presentation is Trinity of War. Yeah. Aside from NUJP, uh, I think the, w the others that were, red, that were victims of red tagging were uh, CM uh, CMFR, PCIJ, uh, I think you already mentioned Bulatlat, uh, yeah, among many others. Then that would partly explain why some of our reporters at Bulatlat had to really be m more careful in their coverage, uh, most especially when uh, writing about human rights violations. This is an alarming situation, Your Honor. And uh, if you may, uh, ma that's why my statement here uh, has something to do with ending impunity and legislative intervention is necessary uh, in this particular case. I would like you to read that statement, but very briefly, because yes. we only have half an hour left. But I would also like to direct the committee secretary to please send, uh, uh, to coordinate with us to send a letter to the AFP asking for this particular Trinity of War presentation so we can watch it ourselves. Go ahead, Mr. Arau. Okay. Uh, this statement is only for about five or seven minutes, and uh, please allow me to read from the prepared statement. Amid the prevailing culture of impunity, any inquiry on the state of the Philippine press should be met with an open mind. That Senate Resolution Number 800 has been filed by Senator Grace Po should therefore be welcomed, albeit with clear parameters, as to how the inquiry on the performance of the pre Presidential Task Force on Media Security shall be conducted in aid of legislation. Given the limited time, please allow me to just explain three parameters on which your planned Senate inquiry may be based. Number one, existence of culture of impunity. The Senate can start with the acknowledgement that culture of impunity exists. Any denial from the powers that be would reflect either ignorance or dismissal of facts like statistics on killings and other forms of human rights violations. For example, the statement of Philippine National Police Director General Oscar Albayalde that it's probably unfair to say that there is a feeling or sense of impunity is consistent with the clause in the administrative order that created PT forms. This administrative order states that violence against journalists merely creates, and I quote, an impression of a culture of impunity and that any unsolved case gives rise to graver impressions of impunity. In other words, the basis for the creation of PT forms does not recognize the culture of impunity's existence. No offense to my friend Joel. Only a perception of it. This gives officials like Albayalde an excuse to sometimes deny its existence, resulting in a more reactive stance in handling attacks on press freedom. And this may also explain why my friend Joel Egko's uh, use of word vulnerable was used to describe areas where media killings happen, when in fact, the more appropriate words would be dangerous and murderous which is something that's used by the Committee to Protect Journalists, just to cite an example. Suffice it to say that with this perspective, the government cannot be proactive, much less help end the culture of impunity. It is hoped that any Senate investigation on PT forms results in correcting the wrong premise on culture of impunity as stated in the administrative order, most especially in the situation where the PNP Director General is a member of PT Forms. Second point, from Presidential Task Force to Independent Commission. After recognizing the existence of culture of impunity, 
perhaps the government through the Senate would consider giving independence to PT Farms by reorganizing it as an independent commission on media safety. The latter's policies and programs may dovetail with the already established Commission on Human Rights. The difference with the CHR, however, is that this independent commission focuses more on the rights and welfare of journalists and media workers based not just on the existing laws, but also, more importantly, on the normative standards of the profession. The task force's independence from the executive branch is absolutely necessary so that it can objectively analyze official statements, decisions, policies, and programs which could threaten press freedom, as in the case of what Rappler is going through with the decision of the Securities and Exchange Commission to revoke its registration as a media company. Incidentally, the complaint against Rappler was filed by the Solicitor General, and pardon this awkward moment, who, just like the PNP Director General, is also a member of PT Farms. Giving independence to the current task force would hopefully result in the proposed commission being controlled and managed by the representatives of the news media sector instead of the current situation where the members of PT Farms are all government officials and the heads of selected media groups are mere observers and resource persons. Number three, my last parameter, inclusivity on the concept of media safety. I realize that the creation of an independent commission on, in on media safety is a long process. For now, the Senate could perhaps encourage the PT firms to be more inclusive in its concept of quote-unquote media safety such that the PT form shall be tasked to do the following. Let me just mention three. Number one, investigate contractualization, union busting, low wages, and other repressive working conditions of journalists and media workers, especially those working in the communities. Number two, review existing laws that are found to be anathema to press freedom, like what was mentioned by Mr. Villanueva, Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, Human Security Act of 2007, and may I also add the Campus Journalism Act of 1991. And after reviewing and finding this anathema to press freedom, it is hoped that the PT forms will join concerned journalists, news media organizations, educators, and students in pushing for their repeal. Not reform, huh? Repeal. Number three, include the representatives of media groups in the quick reaction system of PT forms as it investigates killings and violence against media. In conclusion, these parameters are highly recommended to ensure legislative intervention along the lines of helping end the culture of impunity, Your Honor. Much as we recognize the initiatives of the current PT forms in handling cases of media killings and other violence against media, these are mainly reactive, bereft of any long-term goals of ending impunity whose existence, just to repeat, it officially does not recognize based on the wording of the administrative order. Right now, the PT forms could be publicly perceived, fairly or unfairly, as a government apologist as it inherently cannot criticize the president for his remarks against the media which may be interpreted as attacks on press freedom. So given the predicament of PT forms, any inquiry in aid of meaningful legislation should be welcome. So I look forward to knowing the results of your Senate investigation in case it pushes through your honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is uh, quite enlightening, uh, Mr. Arau. Actually, for my, my question now would be for Mr. Egoy. Itong uh, PT forms, no? It's not just investigating killings, so it's also... We're preventing. Uh, preventing, but is it also for media welfare? Ah, ma'am, thank you for raising that, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, our right-hand approach nga po is uh, this. We run after, we, of course, we may not be God to, to decide on who lives or dies, but we are sure as hell that we will run after them. But that's the right-hand punch. Uh, hindi po kasi kasama sa mandate yung economic... And oh, oh my. Can I say one of the things that we would like to, uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Arrow. 
of course, again, Joel is my friend, but I would beg to differ because the administrative order number one makes clear that it's life, liberty, and security. So these are three broad words where socioeconomic welfare may be included, subject to the decision, of course, of the powers that All Right, right. Okay, so for now, um, it's a very narrow implementation of maybe the the whole objective of yes. this uh, big uh, but, uh, Kasi nga, no, because konte lang kakaumpisa pa lang ninyo, no? Eh, syempre, uh, the issue at hand is uh, the immediate safety. Yes. On the other hand, we need to broaden it. Number one, right. I like your point by saying it should be an independent body. Obviously, when you talk about media, life, liberty, and uh, mm -hmm. security, we also need to talk about uh, independence and their freedom. And siyempre, pag under, it's not your fault, but if it's under the office of the president, siyempre, you will not bite the hand that feeds you, mm -hmm. di ba? Uh, you would not want to do that, or you'd be very cautious to do that. So, uh, is it necessary to legislate again for the creation of a separate task force? Um, or if ever uh, not or if ever you can yourselves uh, devolve, mm. I mean, ask the office of the president to uh, assign independent members from uh, the academe or also from the media yeah. to be permanent board members. Uh, these are things that you can, uh, mm. if I may suggest, because um, we all have ideas in our heads, but unless that idea is acted upon, it will just remain that. So perhaps Mr. Edgo, if you, if you can spare more of your time. It would be nice to include in your meetings, uh, Professor, you're a professor, right? Uh, professor he attended Arau. at least one of our meetings, uh, Your Honor, okay. Prof. Danaro. But you know what, sir? Since uh, you're a member of the academia and perhaps uh, well-suited for this, mm. you can also look and um, try to draft for them uh, what, would be, what would be ideal. Of course, it will, up, w it will all be up to the president and also based on their recommendation, but Hindi sila pwedeng, hindi nila pwedeng sabihin, eh, wala naman kaming ano eh. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Wala naman kaming draft kung anong mag magugustuhan nila. But what is acceptable to you, then maybe you can meet and um, uh, iron out the details yeah. together. And also the KBP can help yes. and also the NUJP. But it's really, it's really unsettling and quite unnerving to know that the AFP is continuing these uh, propaganda which Until now, it's still being carried out, <coughs> which does not seem um, does not seem reconcilable with the statements of the president that he would like to have a uh, Madam Chair, if I may say something briefly, lang po. Sure. Yun po sa case ni Raymond, uh, we have red flagged actually the 101st Technical and Services Support Group of the Reserve Command of the AFP. We just sent the red flag there that whatever happens to. Mr. Raymond, uh, we will run after the uh, officers. Kasi ang pinapakita po natin dito ay mandate natin sa AO. Ilan silang ni red flag niyo doon? Eh, lahat po na official. Okay. Uh, it's addressed to the uh, command actually. And uh, ex uh, we explained to them the mandate under AO1. In fact, marami po tayong tinulungan na tinitira si President Duterte. So hindi po kami namimili. Okay. So hindi, mabuti na lang ganun, ganun pa kayo ngayon. Bakit meron ba direct threat kay Mr. Raymond? I miss that. From the AFP? Is there a direct threat? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Please refresh your memory. How, how in particular did they threaten you? Well, they, um, they accused me of, uh, of uh, being associated with uh, communist groups. Are you? Of course not. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, for the record, I mean, what gives them reason to suspect that? Were you at any point a member of the no, they, of, they, of they, such they, groups? No, they... they, they uh, Based their accusations on the reports that we do and my uh, personal, my posts on my personal Facebook pages, which, which are unfair, uh, Your Honor. Did you, uh, did you at any point threaten the existence of this government? No, 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 state? Your Honor. Uh, in fact, I was just commenting on our coverage of uh, Nutri Asia. And then uh, this reserved uh, command unit of the AFP reacted by uh, taking photos without my permission from my Facebook page and posting 
posting these photos on on its official. Okay, uh, the Nutri Asia page. incident uh, incident was the AFP there to control the no, coverage. No, no, no they no, weren't no, there. Honor. So uh, th this was uh, this this accusation, this red tagging came out of the blue. Wala kung ni hindi ko siya binanggit, hindi ko kilala, hindi ko alam na such a unit exists. No, 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 but you have to say, I'm not very familiar with, uh, with, with what happened exactly in the Nutri Asia strike. Nandun ba yung military? Wala nga, Your Honor. Wala, na, wala uh, naman. Wala, na, wala. Okay, so, anyway, you know, uh, General Bayaldes, uh, for me, uh, quite honorable, and I, I would like to uh, also direct the Secretary, like we should ask them to comment on, the, on these particular statements of... Uh, Mr. Villanueva, and the red flagging of uh, PT forms. Uh, PT? PT? Madam Chair, we red, we red flagged the one who red tagged him. Okay. <laughs> Malilito na ako dito sa mga red na to. <laughs> yung mga reds, red flag, red tags. Okay. Um, PNP. Meron na ba? Ready na kayo? Teka muna, yung DOJ, yung kaso ni Mr. Ke. Wala pa rin? May for resolution na ba yun? PCO, are you aware of this? Ha? Ano ba yun? Um, a local politician who is a current government official? Yes, Madam Chair. And, uh, Hindi ba pwedeng banggitin dito kung sino? Well, pwede po siguro, dahil may kaso naman. Tanong ko po pwede muna ba? sa aking chief of staff. Okay, so sino? Pwede ba banggitin? Oh, isulat mo na lang sa akin mamaya. Yes, Madam Chair. Just tell me. Okay. It's, uh, Your Honor, it's in the opposition paper that uh, in your JP submitted to the Secretariat. Right. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Okay, can we have the... Ito na ba yung sayo, sir? Kanino ba to? Kasi ito po yung mga, ibang, yung mga victims po. Kaya lang, Kiliana, mas ah, okay. importante yung... Uh, tingin ko, mas updated yung Kelyana. Can we play the... Hindi naman sa mas importante, mas uh, updated. Although mas updated po, yes. everyone's voice is important. But uh, if you like... We will get a copy of this. Okay. Kasi may... Ayan. Okay, so itong kaso ni Mr. Liana ay nasaan na ngayon? May, may kaso na ba sa DOJ o papano? Uh, yung kay uh, Joe Villana po, I think uh, mas better paliwanag po ni General Escobar. O sige, please paki-explain po. Chira, we have the presentation uh, on the actions taken regarding the case. O sige, gano katagal yan? Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Police Superintendent Benito Dipa Jr., the OIC uh, of uh, Daraga Municipal Police Station. And uh, I will present to you the investigation update related to the shooting in incident of Joey Liana. As shown is the order of presentation. The special investigation team composition the brief narrative, narrative of the incident, the initial investigation, the actions taken, and the investigations update. As shown is the uh, composition of a special investigations task group. 
Wag na yun. Uh, can you skip? Doon tayo sa ano na nangyayari ngayon, sir. But we appreciate this. At least the comprehensive uh, details. But we just need the meat of the presentation. So for the brief narrative of the incident, at about 5.30 in the morning of July 20, 2018, Angela Pacris informed the Raga MPAs regarding the alleged shooting incident that transpired at Barangay Piña Francia, the Raga Albay. And for the initial investigation, the shooting incident was so fatal and the time of the incident uh, is uh, 4.45 a.m. on July 20, 2018 at uh, Diversion Road, Porok 6, Barangay, Piña Prensia, Daraga Albay. The victim was Juliana Imanata, 43 years old, single radio commentator, broadcaster of DWZR and the resident of uh, Porok 6, Barangay, Piña Prensia, Daraga Albay. The suspects still un unidentified and uh, the following name below are the uh, in investigators on case. The profile of the victim as shown. Wag na po yung profile ng victim. Doon na po tayo sa mga nang nangyayari ngayon na ginagawa ninyo. Sino yung nahuli ninyo? Anong, ano na yung estado ng kaso? na investigasyon. Sa ngayon, ma'am, ongoing pa yung investigation natin, ma'am. Pero And meron na kayong suspects. Sa ngayon, hindi pa po natutukay ang suspects. Ha? Wala kayong, wala, wala at all? Walang lumapit na mga saksi May, or? Mayroon na po kaming nakuhang mga ilan ilan ng mga affidavits. Subalit, uh, wala pang nag-identify doon sa perpetrator. Kasi nung time na yun po, walang... Uh, nakakita doon. Ibig sabihin, walang eyewitness pa hanggang sa ngayon na lumalantad. So, Pero motive, meron ba kayong mga na uh, Sa motive na po, marami tayong tinitingnan since ito si Joey Llana is a hard-hitting commentator according to our interview. Sino, sinong kanyang mga ti, uh, tinitira sa kanyang uh, Mayroong ratio? mga uh, businessman, politician, and then yung mga contractors. Yun po ang mga bali binibira niya sa kanyang programa, ma'am. Ano ba siya? Opposition siya ngayon sa admin o wala naman? Uh, Madam Chair, to uh, <coughs> further expound on the report of uh, si Colonel, um, nagkandak po sila ng separate investigation. We conducted our own parallel. Eh, yung po siya sabi ko na we can discuss it with you kasi very sensitive in an executive session or probably one of these days in your office para makita nyo po lahat. It's a combination, a complex, uh, a mix of many things. There's politics, there's business, there's personal, there's uh, mahirap pong sabihin talaga. Sige. Baka ma ma you know what, actually, eh. no, no, USAC, it's good because we don't want to jeopardize an investigation. Yes, ma'am. Unang-unang, mabanggit, makatakas pa yung mga yan. Um, what, what I can assure you po is uh, we ha we had our uh, confidential case briefing with Secretary Andanar last week and uh, uh, ang masasabi lang po namin is that uh, very promising po nung, yung progress ng kanilang uh, investigation and um, w which we can only discuss with you in the okay. second session. Sure, Let, let's set an appointment sometime um, in next week. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, I think, um, so sir, wala, na, wala, wala, wala po kayong report talaga. Uh, nasabi po ni Yosik Ego, ma'am, na yung investigation natin is, is still on, uh, ongoing. ongoing. So, hindi pa tayo pwedeng magbigay ng mga oh, names sige. since so, na uh, hindi pa natin natutukoy talaga, ma'am. Okay, so ganito lang po. Kayo ba ang point person ng investigation na ito doon sa lugar nyo? Yes, ma'am. Since ako po yung uh, OIC nung talaga municipal police station oh, po. Sige. So, you update us regularly. Uh, and yes. then, how about the... Eh, paano po yung seguridad ng pamilya? Meron naman... Uh, bali, ma'am, na-arrange ko na rin yung security ng family. Uh, nagbigay na rin ako doon ng uh, contact numbers. And ini-include ko na yun sa patrol ng aking uh, uh, personnel doon. Ini-include ko na sa patrolya. Araw at gabi po, pinaikutan ko ng... Uh, uh, mga polis na nagpapatrol niya. Ay, maraming salamat po. So, muli ha, um, Yusek Egwe, yung dedicated phone number mo, importante yon. Opo, ma'am. Although, I'm that. sure they know how to get in touch with you, but uh, for future <laughs> threats, di ba, I think uh, the others should be able to know that. Not that you will post it in in the media publicly. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think just give it to legitimate organizations para naman. Parang ano po, text or call PT form, something like that. Parang ganyan lang. eh. Mm -hmm. I think kayang-kaya na yan. Um, let me ask now, Sir, pasensya na po ha. I think we should just discuss this another time. But since you don't have naman, um, and uh, understandable, wala ka pa namang ano, uh, talagang mare-report. 
So KBP, CHR, siguro marinig, marinig muna natin yung KBP. Uh, just a short statement, sir. Mr. Galvez. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. I would like to read the message of our president, Herman Basbano. He said, uh, the Kapisana ng mga broadcasters sa Pilipinas strongly condemns the killing of radio reporter Joe Iliana in Daraga, Albay. KBP National President Herman Z. Basbano in his statement urges the, the authorities to exert all efforts to conduct thorough investigation and apprehend the perpetrators. Mr. Basbano also enjoins the Presidential Task Force on Media Security to be relentless in according, according justice uh, to Mr. Liana and to stop these killings, which are infringement on the rights of, to life and uh, free press. Okay, Mr. Galvez, thank you very much for, uh, I think we would like to ask for a copy, a hard copy of that, yes, so sir. that we can submit to them. Uh, the concern of Chairman Basbano or President Basbano, President, President, President Basbano is uh, noted, and thank you. I think now we will go with, um, Teka muna, sino pa ba yung mga kaya? NBI, kayo po, meron ba kayong mare-report sa atin tungkol dito sa media killings or investigations? Uh, well, ma'am, uh, in particular dito sa Joey Liliana killing, uh, I share the same uh, observation with uh, Yusik uh, Eko na talagang siguro uh, we cannot uh, just mention as of now yung mga uh, persons of interest. Kasi if we go to the who is that uh, person na who has the strongest motive to kill uh, Joe Iliana, ay medyo, sabihin na natin, medyo mga malalaking negosyante, uh, probably may politician na involved. Uh, marami kasing nakaaway ito si Joe eh. Even uh, his fellow media, uh, nakakaawa niya rin. Kapatid niya. <laughs> oh, siguro, uh, uh, we, we would rather not identify I said the publicly. Same okay, so I understand we can we can do this on an executive session, no? But here's the reality that that's kind of um, disturbing, and I think uh, Professor Arao might agree, no? Dahil ba mga malalaki importanting tao na mga politiko, eh, biglang ginagalang natin yung mga hindi natin basta basta masabi yung pangalan. Sa mantalang kuko na hindi kila la o mahirap lamang ah si ganito ganito yan, di ba? I understand that there are probably repercussions. Let's say you're a business owner or a politician because, number one, if you're a politician, maybe you can't discharge your duties properly with that cloud of doubt with your reputation. And if you have a business, maybe your business might be affected and a lot of people are dependent on your, on your company, you know, by employment. But this is the reality, isn't it? And it's sad, but, but I think that if it is a legitimate concern for the rights of those people, then big or small, wealthy or not, should really be protected if it's an ongoing investigation and there's not enough evidence to link them, if it's just a speculation. So anyway, um, we will discuss this in an executive session. Now, I would like to ask a very brief uh, message maybe from the CHR. Uh, is it you, ma'am, Attorney Parujino? Yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting the Commission on Human Rights. The Commission on Human Rights actually has an advisory ready already for the s for submission to, to to the body to the chairperson. Um, however, I would like to uh, emphasize that as an independent institution, we have the capacity to investigate human rights violations. And up to now, we have problems. Um, coordinating with other agencies with respect to investigations and I think you know about that already uh, because we can oh, know why uh, up to now ma'am we still haven't uh, we still do not have access to records from the police with respect to cases under investigation by the Commission wait a minute but how about your mandate are you supposedly uh, given that authority to coordinate with them and get those yes, records? Yes, there, uh, a, a uh, there is a mandate under the Constitution to request uh, information and uh, um, assistance from so other request, government agencies. Request, yes, meaning um, you can be denied. Yeah, unfortunately, but there is also an in, uh, a mandate to investigate. Uh, that is our topmost mandate under the Constitution to investigate. And that with, uh, with the, in the course of investigation, it is necessary for us to coordinate with other government agencies. Okay. For, for the PNP, is, are, is there any hesitation to share your findings with the CHR? Uh, well, ma'am, uh, 
all our reports are submitted to the national headquarters and uh, I think uh, they should uh, coordinate with the national headquarters if they needed the uh, reports. You know what, CHR, it might help also. If aside from just hammering on the same nail, I mean, if, if you're trying to uh, get results, you can ask for the help of independent senators to help you with your requests. Actually, because if, there if was there's one. Unless there is a, a real threat to national security that they cannot release, there is a directive from the president to allow all executive departments to release those information. So uh, please, our, our office is uh, certainly willing to help. Yes, ma'am, thank you very much. That is okay. well taken. Uh, we will put that in, to in our recommendation okay, also now to our um, I, yes. I, I would just like to add, there was a time before when we when we have this AO35 under the last administration. I think it's now AO1. I don't know if it's the same. Um, uh, but then again, uh, during AO35, then your, my representation was able to uh, uh, actively participate in the technical working group. And you were able to share uh, uh, information coming from the CHR, the PNP, and the AFP. So there was a triangulate of information coming from all sources um, in within government. So that way, even uh, victims that were afraid to come out uh, and comes to CHR, for example, we can actually report without actually divulging um, um, necessary information for them. That is a good practice, and we would have wanted to continue the practice. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I'd have to conclude uh, this one. But before I do so, I would like to recap the important discussion. I'm sorry, uh, Yusek Katpayat, do, do you have something to add? I mean, like a short statement from PCOO. I think Yusek Eko already covered everything. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, you should be thank proud you. of yourselves to have somebody else associated uh, with your agency. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank Department. you, Madam Chair. Yeah, okay. So these are the things that I think are necessary from our discussion today. Number one, we need a hotline. Matagal na natin hinihingi yan. And then, um, humika ng funding, sir. Maraming perang PCOO. Uh, o kaya yung, yung Office of the President. Pag and then, we'll follow up on that. Ha? And then, we'll also ask for the help of the telcos. Baka naman pwede na lang tayong bigyan ng dedicated uh, line for that. Na libre pag nag-text. Okay. Now, I would like you to work with uh, the NUJ NUJP and also with Professor Arau and the KBP uh, to come up with a proposal on how to have this task force, in, um, to have an independent task force. So maybe it will still be under the office of the president. Okay, kasi baka mahirap to create, to legislate eh. Uh, baka matagalan tayo dyan. But baka naman yung composition ninyo Pwede kayong maglagay, you have the flexibility to put in independent uh, members, like for example, from them, tapos, yon. Uh, Madam Chair, Pwede brief, ba yon sa briefly, we have plans actually, uh, we, are, we are proposing that this be converted into a presidential commission. Ang ating pong mga media partners, they are part of the task force actually, as observers and resource persons, NUJP, NPC, KBP, actually kami po talaga oh, pero, magkakasama. Hindi kaya nga. Pero siyempre, mas maganda kung hindi lang observer, kung meron silang yes. ano, voting rights o so ano. Members. I, I guess they have. Uh, mostly po ng decisions namin, uh, I confer with them. Kung ano po ang decision ng task force, ay ng media partners namin, yung po ang usually sinusunod ko dahil sila ang client. O, oh, sige. Tapos, ilagay na rin ninyo, um, kasi this is also for the welfare of media in general. Ano? So number, yung, I don't know if uh, you can if you can coordinate with other government agencies to have affordable insurance for them. Yes, Although we have, meron na tayong universal health care, pero parang, ano ba tawag ito, um, uh, what do you call this, yung insurance for high risk yes. uh, we, we really groups, need such parang, help, ma'am, kasi ako po, I, I, I bluntly, again, I tell you, uh, from my own pocket, nagpapadala po ako doon sa families ng victims. Ay, kaya hirap nga, na hirap eh. so maganda sana, di ba? Nakakawa. Hindi lang naman burial expense, pero, yes. I mean, you know, parang hazards of your work. I, I don't know if it can be done. Of course, we, we are limiting, we are, we, we are working on a, a limited resource. But, why not, di ba? Um, Mr. Villanueva. Your Honor, uh, there's a pending uh, uh, house bill. 
authored by uh, Bayan Muna Representative uh, Carlos Zarate, uh, mandating or calling for uh, uh, free insurance for all media practitioners. Ay, Perhaps alam mo, your honor. No, it, it sounds very, I, it sounds very, uh, what do you call this? It's almost, it's, it's a bit lofty eh, kasi syempre di ba pag media practitioners, ang hirap din to identify, although we can say Le uh, members of legitimate organizations. Pero ang dami na ngayon. So, pag-internet rin, ganyan. So, how do we do it that it's affordable? Kasi baka naman pag-free, hindi rin kaya din ng government. And that's the truth. Uh, so, but we look at that bill and thank you for calling our attention to it because I would like to find a counterpart here if it will be helpful. But let, let's be pragmatic also, no? Kasi... Uh, I think the, the, the bill is asking the employers uh, the the, the uh, owners to pay to, to, to pay Kasi for the insurance sa KBP ba, of, under sir, the employee. Wala ba? Wala ba kayo insurance? Meron po, Madam Chair. Actually, so yung family all. ni Joeliana inaasikaso na po yung requirements to get the um, insurance. Ano ba sila? Under what particular company? Accredited po ng, ano, under um, kay Mr. Baldo. Uh, basta kilala ko lang po kayo yung, ano, yung franchise owner si Pero Mr. Pero KBP, Baldo. meron KBP ba kayong... Member po. Kunyari KBP member ka, may insurance ba yan? Opo. Meron hazard po. pay, hazard insurance, yung ganon? Mm, meron po yung sa, uh, yung accreditation, yung card, it uh, has with it the uh, insurance. Oh, sige. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good to know. And yung JP, meron ba? Wala, your honor. Oo, oh, kasi, di ba? Ilan members niyo? We have uh, around 60 chapters nationwide and that's at least uh, 250. 250,000? No, 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 not that many, Your Honor. Uh, 250 active members. Oh, kaya na naman siguro at kung bibigyan kayo ng pool, di ba? Or if, if uh, the PCO can uh, mediate between an insurance company, malay mo, di ba? Parang there is actually, Madam Chair, alin? Uh, meron pong um, arrangement between the Chinese General Hospital and the PCO. Uh, nag Eh, kaso naman, paano pupunta ang Chinese General Hospital, lahat sila, di ba? Ngayon lang yung madami. So, oh. we really need to talk this out with our media partners. Kung oh. ano po, sila po talaga ang pinakikinggan natin kung anong maganda because we cannot intervene oh. or uh, baka, kasi baka sabihin. Kasi ang pwedeng gawin, of course, I'm not an expert, no, sir, pero parang on certain issues lang, if you're injured uh, in your line of work, kunyari, na ano, not necessarily general health first kasi meron naman tayong universal health care, no? Pero kung magbabayad ng minimal amount kasi, what is the likelihood naman of them being shot or, uh, let's say, it, in their line of work? So it's low risk pa rin for some insurance companies. If there's a monthly fee that you're paying, kahit pa paano, okay pa rin yun. Let's say, sabi mong babayaran nila, I don't know, 100 pesos per month. I, I, I mean, I'm not saying that that's the amount, but Hindi pa rin naman siguro talo yung mga insurance companies for accepting that. Especially if it's only uh, insuring, let's say, you were injured during your line of uh, dispensing your duties, during your line of work. Parang ganon. Madam Chair, yeah. meron po niyan yung 100 pesos lang yata pag uh, card bearer ka nila. Tapos 25,000 yung... yung o, oh, tinan mo, yung meron palang Meron ganon. po, ma'am. Ah. Meron. O, oh, sige. Let's, let's make it standard. At saka, isi masipag kayo eh. Pwede kayong maging advocate ng ganyan kasi hindi lang naman natin tutulungan yung mga napatay, napatay na o yung mga papatayin, yung mga buhay. Di ba? At saka ang isa pang concern na, isa pang concern nito, although we don't have time to discuss this, discuss this now, is also the threats on journalists and, and also harassment and um, disrespect. I mean, of course, you can only get respect if you're also respectful. But, but what I mean is... Um, Kawawa rin naman pag masyado na rin hinaharas. So, pag-usapan din natin yung restriction on your freedoms. Sometimes, the threat of violence is not the only restriction. It could also be the threat of insults. Di ba? And, and the threats of being publicly shamed. Although, uh, playing devil's advocate, sasabihin rin, eh kasi yung media nang papayarin, di ba? Nilalabas rin yung ano. Yes. But, but, kung trabaho yon hindi personal, di ba? Hmm. Kung walang personalan, kailangan based on facts. Madam so, Chair, sa journalist ko... Like that, we really need to promote that, to address that problem. Thank you. Okay, so, 
uh, we will ask for the regular updates for the killings. Since I'm chairman of uh, Public Information, PNP, yung nine media killings natin, at least from June 30 to May 1, bigyan niyo na ako ng quarterly updates, ha? Uh, kung, nasa, kung nasaan na. And maybe we'll ask also the DOJ for that. And then, ang higit sa lahat, ang hinihingi naman natin dito, hustisya at saka protection. Diba? At paggalang na rin. Maraming salamat po. This meeting is hereby suspended.